Hi there, my name is Mandy Mutchy and I change lives and play dress up for a living, which is exactly as awesome as it sounds. This is a video basically giving the main points of the book Jab, 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 Right Hook by Gary Vaynerchuk. I was originally planning on creating this video specifically for my team of Beachbody coaches because I wanted to help them be able to increase their reach on social media. But then the more I thought about it, the more I thought that this would really be content that would be valuable for anyone who is trying to increase their reach on social media. So I decided instead to make it a public video and share it with all of you. So I hope you enjoy it. Now before I start, I want to say that this is in no way a good replacement of reading Jab, 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 Right Hook by Gary Vaynerchuk because I'm just going to give some Cliff Notes version points that you should follow, but reading the book is really recommended because he actually even shows examples of great and terrible posts for social media and gives really great tips on just how to make sure that you are doing the absolute best that you can. Also, he's a hilarious writer, so it's a really easy read. I actually read it on a plane from San Diego to Milwaukee, so it's nothing that could be intimidating. So just read it, you'll have fun, and you'll learn a lot. So the first one that I want to talk about is Facebook. Well, actually, before I even get to Facebook, um, the main point and the meaning behind the title is that on social media, especially if you're using it for a marketing standpoint, you should actually be adding value to people's lives one way or another with a bunch of jabs, so jab, 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 before you do anything to try to sell them. So don't always be like, hey, buy this, hey, buy this, hey, buy this, because people will ignore you. I always like to compare it to a cocktail party, and I actually might have gotten this example from the book. I don't know. I've been saying it for a long time now. But if you are standing near someone at a cocktail party and they're teaching you cool things or they're really nice or they're really funny and it's stuff that you know you enjoy hearing, you're going to want to stand by that person more. But if they're constantly saying, hey, buy this, hey, buy this, then you're going to find a new place to stand at the cocktail party, which means that your post will be ignored and you might get unfollowed or unfriended or whatever it is on whatever social network. So don't be that guy, I guess is the first point. So now on to Facebook. In his book, he actually gives a list of questions that you should ask yourself before you post something on each of a few different popular forms of social networking. So I'm going to actually just give you those questions. So when you're posting on Facebook, there's kind of a different culture for each social networking site, and there's different things that you should kind of follow when you do that. So one thing is, is the text too long? If you are writing a long, long text thing, most people on Facebook are not going to read it. Then you should ask yourself, is it provocative? entertaining or surprising because if it's not you're gonna get ignored is the photo striking and and high quality if your photo is boring nobody's gonna pay attention to it if it's blurry or dark or crooked or things like that you're also not gonna get the reach that you would like to get the next one is is the logo visible you want people to remember that that picture is from you not to potentially not have any idea where it came from, especially if things get reshared and things like that. So remember to put your logo on there. And if you know any good ways to do that, comment below so that I can start putting logos on my pictures because Gary V would probably use mine as don't pictures because of that question. The next one, have we chosen the right format for the post? So he gives tips on that. You want to make sure that you are looking at if you're posting from your personal page or from a like page because there are different Facebook um, things that go, analytics that go in that make it more likely or less likely for your post to be seen. So you just need to be cognizant of that and it's constantly changing, so make sure you're always reading up on it. Next is the call to action in the right place. You want to encourage people to like or share or click a link or something like that and make sure that that's in the right place. Is it interesting in any way to anyone for real? So, for example, people checking in on Foursquare saying they're picking up their dry cleaning. Nobody cares. Make sure that you're putting something that someone would care about. And then next, are we asking too much of the person for consuming the content? I'm guilty of this in my past contests where I've given people 15 steps of things they needed to do for an entry. People don't have time for that. Make sure you make it simple for the people to interact with you. The next one, Twitter. Questions to ask yourself before you post your Twitter content. Is it to the point? 
Obviously, Twitter has a 140 character limit, so you don't want to write a novel. Make sure you stick to the point. Is the hashtag unique and memorable? If you have a hashtag you're trying to get traction with, and it's like 5G4RQ, people aren't going to remember that. But they might remember something like Summer Slim Down, which is actually Beachbody's most recent hashtag they're doing a contest with. Next, is the image attached high quality? Twitter images are advancing a lot. A lot of the apps and even the website are including it in the streamline instead of how it used to be where you'd have to click a link to see any pictures. So since people are going to be looking at your picture, you of course want it to be a high quality picture. And then next, does the voice sound authentic and will it resonate with the Twitter audience? I check who follows me on Twitter, which by the way, you should follow me on Twitter. But I check who follows me, and if I go and look at their tweets and they sound like they're a robot, or if every tweet's the same, or if it's cheesy and they sound salesy, I won't follow them. But if they have interesting content and it seems like they're interacting with people, then I'm a lot more likely to follow them back. So think, people are probably looking at your page in the same way. Would you follow yourself if you saw your tweets? On to Pinterest, and this is something that I really need to get better at using, so I'd love any tips that you have for Pinterest. But does my picture feed the consumer dream? Oh, since Pinterest is mostly used by females, it's a highly emotional social networking site. So you want to give an ideal image that people will live up to. So that's kind of what Pinterest is all about. So make sure you are appealing to the emotions of a dreamlike life. And that's what works well on Pinterest. Um, did I give my board clever and creative titles? So nobody wants to follow a board that's just called stuff. But if you have stuff that rocks my socks off, that might be more interesting to someone. Have I included a price where appropriate? So I don't know about how many people who would be watching this would be selling things on Pinterest, but if you are, it'd probably be nice to have the price there so that people can determine right away, right away whether or not they're interested in making that purchase. Next, does every photo include a hyperlink? Of course you want it to go back to you so that you can Make sure you're getting the leads from whatever that is. So make sure you're putting a hyperlink with your photos. Could this pin double as an ad or act as an accompanying photo to an article featured in a top flight magazine? Again, Pinterest is super visual. You're selling the dream. So you don't want to have poor quality photos or unattractive photos because it should be something that people really want to see. Next. Is the image easily categorized so people don't have to think too hard about where to repin it to their boards? So just thinking about the structure of Pinterest, you want to make it easy for them so that they don't have to create a new board every time they repin one of your pins and just have something automatically that they can use where they know it's going to go that way. Next, Instagram. Is my image artsy and indie enough for the Instagram crowd? So Instagram is a little bit more of a hip crowd than some of the other social media networking sites. So you're going to want to make sure that your picture is artistic and pretty. And again, I've from Shalene J Johnson says that you should consider your Instagram account like your own personal magazine. So again, attractive pictures, very important. Next, have I included enough descriptive hashtags? Instagram is huge on hashtags. So make sure that you're using hashtags that make sense and fit with your picture. Um, sometimes I do like to do a funny one that for sure is probably the only one that ever has been used is on that picture, and that's more of an entertainment thing, but a lot of the time I will try to brainstorm, you know, you can use up to 30 at this time, as many hashtags as I can that somebody might be looking for my content might search. So make sure you're using that to your advantage. Instagram is also a younger social media form, so make sure that your stories are appealing to a young generation, and really just think about your target and make sure that it goes for that. Last, Tumblr, which is one of my favorites. So you want to make your own theme for your Tumblr page, and it should be something that properly reflects your brand. And then the rest is that Tumblr is heavy on GIFs, G-I-F. So the rest of the questions are, did I make a cool animated GIF? So make sure you're doing that. And I hope I'm saying that right, because that's a word that I've only read and not ever heard spoken. So um, that's something to consider. But yeah, I really thought it was a great book. I highly recommend that you read it. But those are the main tips, and I hope they're useful for you. If you have any tips for me, I'm always looking to learn things about different social media. So please comment below and subscribe and follow me on my social media. Have a great day.